The most common way that the Lord speaks to us is through convictions. Um, this is like the primitive spiritual communication that the Lord often uses with us. Uh, if we sin, we get convicted. Uh, there's times where it's not even sin. There's times where we might want to do something or we have a, a decision that needs to be made and we get the conviction of truth of the perfect thought, the perfect uh, way of going about doing so. And oftentimes it seems like it comes out of nowhere. Uh, convictions are truly amazing, especially if you learn to master, to discern uh, which convictions are of the Lord and which ones are not. However, um, a lot of people wish to have a much more, uh, I guess, formal way of communicating with the Lord uh, in the mode of conversation. And this is also possible. Um, really, what it comes down to is just our thoughts. The Lord, when he speaks to us, uh, oftentimes it will come through our thoughts as well. When demons tempt us, they tempt us through our thoughts. It sounds like us. If you're being tempted by, uh, by the enemy, he'll often also use um, I in first person. And we often get deceived thinking, oh, I'm hungry. Or, oh, I feel like this. Or, oh, I'm, I'm lonely. And at first, that thought may not even actually be yours. Um, it's actually the voice of the enemy. We then believe it, and then we take ownership of it and run with it. Um, we can then reject thoughts along those lines and other thoughts, far more sinful thoughts, um, and hold on to the truth of what we know of, of the Lord, and all of a sudden there's a battle in our mind. If you find that there's a battle in your mind, that means that you are wrestling with thoughts that are not yours. It is impossible for you to fight with your own thoughts. If you find yourself in a fight, it's because you are fighting with, um, your thoughts versus another's thoughts. And many times people find themselves in a fight with Jesus, where uh, they might be convicted to do something and they refuse. The Lord might convict them again, they refuse, and then the Lord will back up. And they run about with what they want to do and have fellowship with the enemy. They run with the enemy's thoughts. Part of this is because many are not taught how to discern between the voices of the enemy versus the voices of God, or the voice of God, rather. Well, then again, he does use multiple voices, but either way. The point is, if you want to start following Jesus, it's about discerning which thoughts are yours versus which thoughts are the enemy's, and then which, ones, um, which one is the voice of God. Hebrews chapter 5, the very um, ending part of that chapter, going into chapter 6, it talks about babes in Christ not being able to fully uh, be able to discern the voice of good and evil yet. It talks about how babes in Christ are still learning how to develop this. Those who are mature have learned how to develop this and have developed this, and now they're walking in it because they're able to discern who is who and follow after Jesus. Interestingly enough, this is the foundations of being perfect as well. So when it comes down to it, if you want to start following Jesus, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is repent of your sins. Uh, that's number one, because you don't want to be coming into uh, trying to seek the Lord with sin in your life, um, because sin is fellowship with Satan. And if you're in fellowship with the enemy of God, he's going to corrupt messages. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just repent of the sin in your life, or even if you're just repenting of it as in um, siding with Jesus. And let's say you're still not sure what to do to overcome it. You could at least ask the Lord at that point, what should I do to overcome it? But that's the first thing you want to do is make sure you repent of sin, at least side with Jesus when you're going into prayer, really uh, despising it and going to him. And then the first thing you should really do is seek him for grace. The next thing you want to do is just deny yourself of your own desires, especially if you're going to be asking questions that have uh, have to do with your own life or what you want to do or what you feel you should be doing for direction. You're going to want to repent of uh, repent of your own desires and just simply desire the truth. Simply desire to hear the voice of God above your own voice, above your own heart, ab above your own desires. Put yourself aside. Deny yourself. 
the next thing you want to do is make sure that you definitely repent of fear and doubt. Uh, these two can come in the forms of fear of receiving an answer or fear of God not answering. Um, repent of these things because God is going to answer. He said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. He wants to talk to us. He actually has a lot to talk to us about. Remember, this covenant is about him teaching us. So he wants us to be able to hear and communicate with him because he wants to teach us. This is, <laughs> this is part of what he wants to do with us. So we do not have to fear or doubt him answering us or what the answer will be. Especially once you start practicing this and you start seeing results. Um, I had a situation, uh, a season where um, I was becoming becoming fearful of the types of answers I might get from, from the Lord because I knew I was hearing from him. And I'm speaking to the God of the universe, God of all creation, and I'm hearing from him what he says goes, and I started getting a little bit overwhelmed. And I had to repent and remember that everything that God says is good. Everything. And if there's something that is causing me to be discouraged, doubtful, uh, fearful, that means I believe a lie somewhere and I need to just repent of that lie. Likewise, I share the same thing with you. All these things the Lord taught me. That list I just went through of repenting from sins, repenting from yourself. Uh, make sure that you repent of doubt and fear especially. And lastly, believe he's going to answer and focus on him. These are the things he told me to do uh, to maintain myself when seeking him. It really helps make the channels clear. Now, when you're seeking the Lord and you're just waiting for him to respond, uh, don't put him in a box. Like, he can answer through thoughts as in actual words and sentences. Definitely, you're most likely going to be hearing that. But he can also answer through memories, uh, visions, even light visions of your imagination that can come in the form of memories or they can come in the form of just uh, thought impressions coming to you. Um, he can speak to you by convictions again. Just be open to the Lord speaking to you. Learning to hear the voice of the Lord is not simply just him saying sentences, but it's being able to identify the Lord speaking through whichever means and through whichever channels he chooses. So if he decides to speak to you with a memory, it's like you seek the Lord, he gives you a memory. You, let's say you ask him, Lord, why do I keep doing this? And then he just brings back a memory of maybe the first time you had a situation or some tragedy in your life or something. There's your answer. Then there's other times he might just say straight up, it's because you do this, this, and this, or you're not doing this and this. Or he could just give you a Bible scripture. So this is just the basics. I mean, you can take the information that's just been provided here. You can take this and run with it, and you will definitely receive answers from the Lord. Uh, the last thing I do want to mention is testing spirits. Uh, this is important because... Um, any spirit can really answer you, and there's a whole lot of false prophets out there, a whole lot of false Christs, and I'm not speaking about people, I'm talking about spirits. Sometimes people dream dreams, and their dreams are false because they're coming from false prophet spirits and false Christ spirits. Likewise, we can go to the Lord and we can get an answer. Um, we should be testing spirits the way that uh, John mentioned. I, I believe it was uh, in John cha uh, 1 John chapter 4. Um, and he, he was speaking to the children, the new believers, new converts, and told them to try every spirit. And he said that any spirit that does confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of God. Those that do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh are not of God. So when you're receiving answers, you can then ask, test the spirit, ask if Jesus Christ came in the flesh and you'll receive an answer. When you do get an answer, make sure it is a substantial yes. Even if it might be kind of foggy or not entirely clear, but you can make out that it is a yes, then it's a yes. There are some other complications which I'm not going to go into in this video. But just to keep things simple, you're looking for a yes. If you get a no, if you get a maybe, if you get a, um, a yes or no, yes or no, if you get some weird crafty things, if you start getting answers before you even finish asking the questions, uh, do not accept those. Um, seek the Lord, ask, be patient, and wait on a, on a clear yes. If you, if you ask and that does not pass, drop it. You can go back, ask the original question again, wait for an answer, and then again you test the Spirit. And you, you will hear from Jesus. He's going to answer you.
what we should be starting with is sin. When you come to the Lord and you start asking him questions, he taught me that the, the number one thing is to deal with his stuff on his priority list, which is our life, our lives, our life. And deal with your sin first. Go to him and ask him, Lord, okay, what's in my life that's not pleasing to you? He's going to answer you. He will tell you. He will convict you. And if he's already told you, he might be silent because you already know. So once you know, whether you've already known before or he's just told you now and it's, it's well, okay, I didn't realize. Ask him. Okay, Lord, well, how do I fix this? How do I overcome this? Give me an instruction. Give me a, uh, give me some form of, um, you know, some grace. And he'll give you instruction on what to do. And with asking these, you can ask as many times as you want. You can you can ask questions as, as that might seem foolish as much as you want. Um, ask until you know, ask until you understand, and ask until you have something that you can actually apply and see the results of. The reason why starting with uh, repentance and starting with sin is so important is because, number one, it eliminates um, one of the biggest areas or one of the biggest things that hinder us from hearing from the Lord, at least hearing clearly. And number two, it'll build your confidence up because you'll know it's Jesus. He destroys sin. So when you hear the instruction and you do what he says, you're going to be seeing the results and it's going to boost your faith. You're going to be like, wow, Jesus taught me to do, well, this is, it'll, it'll really skyrocket your faith. So I, I recommend starting with this because this is what the Lord taught me. I know some others, they ask other questions, the Lord will still answer them. But um, start with, with repentance and then um, go on and just build your relationship with him. Once you start hearing from him, that's it. You, you're hearing from him. Now it's just practicing and being diligent. And he's going to start teaching you. And then the other other difficulties that could arise or complications and other things that can pop up, the Lord is going to start teaching you about those as well. Just trust in him. Don't give up. If you get deceived, if you follow the wrong voice, don't give up and say, oh, man, this isn't for me. I messed up. Nope. Get up and learn from your mistake. Jesus wants you to understand this. This is part of the new covenant. So even if you mess up, you, you have open arms to go back. Learn from your mistakes and move forward.